Good morning, Your Excellencies, <coughs> distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. I hope you have had a very productive and useful discussions on DRR, disaster risk reduction, over the past few days. And I think this session is really the culmination of all the hard work that has been done, not only during this conference, but in previous consultations and meetings to date, as we move forward towards the FHA 2. And before we proceed, I just would like to inform you of the proceedings this morning. We will first present to you the Asia Pacific input to the HFA2. That will be followed by the presentation of voluntary commitments by the stakeholder groups. And then we will discuss the Bangkok Declaration, which will refer to the above mentioned documents, both the Asia Pacific input and the voluntary commitments by stakeholders. And then we will have a plenary discussion moderated by the SRSG Wallstrom. And then we, that will complete this morning's plenary summing up what has transpired over the past few days before we move into this morning's closing ceremony. So without further ado, I believe you have in front of you, or if you have not, I believe that the Secretariat is trying to reproduce the, the final draft of the HFA input paper from the Asia Pacific region. It is also being put online as well. This document, as you know, has undergone extensive multi-stakeholder consultations by governments and partners over the past two and a half years, following the launch of global consultations in March of 2012. During the first phase, many governments, local governments, intergovernmental organizations, and stakeholder groups from the Asia Pacific region provided inputs. A full day consultation was also carried out during the last meeting, the fifth Asian Ministerial Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction in Yogyakarta, Indonesia in 2012. The, with the endorsement the of the 6th AMC DRR Executive Committee in August of last year and at the IAP meeting in November of last year as well to call for contributions by countries and stakeholders. Based on national level consultations and detailed contributions from several national governments, local governments, IGOs, and other stakeholder groups was received. They are too numerous to list, but they are acknowledged within the paper itself. The front part of the paper acknowledges all the contributions received from national governments and other stakeholder groups. And we are very appreciative to you all. The draft has been widely circulated for comments and feedback, both with governments and partners, and we have tried to accommodate most proposed amendments and feedback. Lastly, the peer-reviewed input document was also circulated through diplomatic channels this earlier this month to solicitate uh, to solicit official comments from governments as well. We need to strengthen measures for re achieving resilience to disasters. Eight, to strengthen the role of women. And nine is to enhance risk, governance, and accountability. I therefore present this final document for adoption, which will be recommended by this conference as the Asia Pacific input document for HFA2 as one of the regional deliberations for the Third World Conference for Disaster Risk Reduction as per the Bangkok Declaration. Thank you.
If there are no f comments, I take it that is adopted. And now pass the floor to the special representative of the Secretary General, Margareta Wallstrom. Good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, final plenary of the sixth uh, Asia Ministerial Conference of Disaster Risk Reduction. And thank you, Ambassador Tani. Um, you are both the chair of the drafting committee here, but also importantly a member and co-chair of the Bureau to prepare for the World Conference next year, which I think we all have as an objective. As the second part of um, of reporting back to you on the uh, outcome and the results of mo more than two years of, in fact, I think much longer, but consultations and work of the stakeholders on disaster risk reduction in Asia. We will invite a representative of each of the stakeholder groups that have worked here with you in the past four days to uh, read a summary of their statements, because I can see that some of the statements are a bit long, so I'm sure you have done a, a succinct summary of them. And I'd like to start, um, I will just go logically along the table here, so I'd like to invite, uh, first of all, the representative of the CSOs, Mr. Manu Gupta, uh, to summarize your statement, please. Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, friends and colleagues, uh, good morning. My name is Manu Gupta and I am speaking to you today in my capacity as the chair of ADRRN and focal point for the CSO task force in Asia Pacific. Friends, if there is one phrase that I heard most often in the conference, it was, I quote, our shared responsibility. I believe a fresh departure has been made first in acknowledging the significant contributions the non-governmental stakeholders, including CSOs, have made in the past decade, and second, providing a much-deserved space in engaging as equal partners throughout the process. To, this, to say the very least, it has created a greater sense of ownership and hope among us. And it is in this spirit that we have put together some bold commitments that I would like to present to you before today. Respected Chair, in putting together this statement, we have carried out ex extensive consultations with communities, fellow organizations, and a great number of out of the 800 plus CSO representatives participating in this conference. Included also our inputs from the Asia Pacific HFA 2 document draft, the joint civil society position paper put together by GNDR, the community resilience survey carried out by ADRRN, and position statements from the Japanese civil society network, JCC 2015, the SGI, CSO networks from Philippines, Myanmar, and organizations including ActionAid, Handicap, Oxfam, ChristianAid, World Vision, Caritas, the Wairo Commission, child-focused organizations, the Asia Dalit Rights Forum, faith-based organizations, World Animal Protection and Farmers' Voices. In the spirit of partnership and in our role as facilitators, community workers, pressure groups sometimes, uh, madam, and as uh, most often as bridges, and with a genuine wish to see the issues that we are advocating are included in the Bangkok Declaration and the HFA2 consultative process, we would like to make very briefly the following com commitments. I believe the details would be uploaded, so I'm just going to read out the headlines. In actions related to the three sub-themes of the conference, we commit to the following actions. Promote and strengthen community-centered, ecosystem-based, multi-stakeholder collaboration to address drivers of risk and vulnerability, and harnessing the power of volunteerism, risk assessment, resilience building. Make science, information, technology, and innovation accessible and locally relevant and culturally acceptable. Promote and strengthen local capacity building, prioritizing the role of women, children, and youth, people with disabilities, and other at-risk groups as partners. Call upon governments and international actors to systematically increase investments in DRR financing and climate change adaptation and mitigation and create or strengthen financing mechanisms which are directly accessible to at-risk communities. And the last action, to proactively track and 
report on progress made on commitments made here as part of the Bangkok declarations. Madam, in actions related to evolving the HFA2 priorities, I'll briefly re read out the following actions that we commit to here. First, to actively promote a people-centered approach ensuring active participation of all groups, promote strengthened risk governance systems at local levels, call for increased recognition and cooperation and investments in prevention of everyday small-scale disasters, but also disasters of tomorrow with their cascading effects on people's lives and productive assets. Call upon the political leadership at both national and local level for recognition of links between the commitment to ensure policy coherence regarding DRR, climate change, and SDGs. And call upon governments for trans-border cooperation between countries and communities for disaster reduction, and especially in areas of early warning Promote education and learning as the basis of all DRR actions. And finally, call upon governments to empower national and local platforms on DRR, engaging all stakeholders to ensure accountable action by all towards prevention of disaster losses. I have excluded some few details which would be available in print format. Our good wishes and deepest gratitude to you, Madam, the Royal Thai Government, the UNISDR, to have led this very, very inclusive process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Manu Gupta, on behalf of the CSOs for that um, very focused statement. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Shaw will uh, represent the statement of the Asia Science, Technology and Academia Stakeholder Group. You have the floor. Uh, excellencies, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rajiv Shaw. I am representing Asian University Network of Environment Disaster Management, AUEDM, which is the co-lead of this stakeholder group, science, technology, research, and academia, along with IRDR and my colleague, Dr. Jane Robbins. <clears throat> the details, again, have been uploaded, and there will be, it will be available on the website, so I will just uh, highlight the salient points of discussion. Our stakeholder group have five objectives, research, higher education, integration of research programs into policies and applications, helping setting up the global standards, standardization of open source information and data, helping in raising the awareness of the decision making and public by promoting effective, integrated, demand-driven, and evidence-based disaster risk initiative, and motivate funding sources to allocate priority funding to address the urgent need of the applied and basic integrated research. We have identified a series of actions under three sub-theme of the conference, community resilience, public investment, and private sector engagement. On the community resilience side, we have, we have committed to promote and engage innovative community-based action research, to promote higher education linked to the communities with engagement of university students. On the public investment, enhance funding for cutting-edge monitoring and implemented some research target specific higher education program in disaster risk reduction in public universities, and on the private sector in, uh, engagement, enhance private sector participation in demand-driven research in risk reduction. We have also identified a series of actions which are related to the evolving HFA2 priorities towards risk prevention, risk reduction, and strengthening resilience. I won't go into the details of those actions, but I will just pick up a couple of them, which is the understanding, the improvement of integrated approaches to disaster risk reduction with local, national, regional, and 
global awareness raising programs, training and advocacy at local and national level, set the target of number of universities providing higher education, support the establishment of an international science academia and technological advisory mechanism for disaster risk reduction to strengthen resilience for post-2015 agenda and identify and prepare scientific, scientifically informed multi-hazard risk assessment and scenarios. And to achieve those actions, we have a few priority commitments which are uh, structured in short term up to 2016, medium term up to 2020, and long term up to 2025. I will just pick up a couple of points on the short term targets, which are at least five countries in the Asia Pacific regions will have two universities providing master's level program in disaster risk reduction. Increase the number of science ministries, national science foundations, and national academias involved in hazard risk and disaster risk reduction research and application by 5% by 2016, by 10% of 2020, and by 25% for 2025. The AXA Research Fund or AXA Insurance Group is committed to grant 100 million euro to global basic academic research from 2013 to 2018 and to develop a system for restoring, upgrading existing monitoring and observation network. There are other series of commitments which will be again available, the document which is up there, uploaded in the web, uh, website. And I would like to end with a personal note that if we think about the evolution of disaster risk reduction from 1990 onward, we are now 24 year old. Next year in Sendai we will be 25. And with this 25 years of evolution, I think we have enough academic maturity to evolve disaster risk reduction as an academic discipline. And I hope from our group we will be working with all different other stakeholders. We need your support to fulfill these commitments. I end this presentation with profuse thank to Royal Thai government and UNHCR to bringing us here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Shaw. For all those of you who have not seen the format for the voluntary commitments, um, all the commitments contain a request to do something measurable and to provide concrete indicators for success, which uh, also the CSO group has done. So. I think you will see both the self-monitoring and a collective monitoring of the commitments that are being delivered here. Um, so I think that's a very important uh, contribution that you are making. Um, and then I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Sandra Wu. She represents here the private sector partnership group. She is also uh, the chair of the ISDR advisory group on private sector and disaster risk reduction. Sandra. Thank you, Margareta. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sandra Wu. I'm the chair of private sector partnership group. On behalf of our private, private sector partnership group, it is our privilege to be included in the six AMC DRR. The private sector plays an important role in building the resilience of nation and communities. In this complex, globalized world, neither the private nor the public sector can act alone if the complex challenge of reducing the risk of hazard is to be effectively addressed. In response to this, UNISDR has been working with the private sector to build the resilience of the private sector and of society. In 2011, UNISDR developed two mechanisms to engage the private sector in its work. 
the Disaster Risk Reduction Private Sector Partnership, DRRPSP, consisting of nearly 70 companies, which includes 13 Asian companies, and the Private Sector Advisor Group, PSAG, acting as the steering committee of PSP that has four Asian members. All members signed and committed to two key documents. The statement of commitment by the private sector for disaster prevention, resilience, and the risk reduction. And the call for action, five essentials for business in disaster risk reduction. We do not just talk and read the newsletters and so on. We are actually organized into five working groups that support and advise UNISDR activities at the global, regional, and the national level to promote, to promote the DRR agendas in different programs and the initiatives, such as Resilience Scorecard and the RISE, and the Consolidate Private Sector Input for HFA2. The private sector is diverse in size in our industry sector and what we are good at. And we are embedded in all parts of our country, from village to towns to cities. We sincerely wish to create a safe and resilient society where the business operates. In other words, we are not doing this just for corporate social responsibility, although that is important, but also for our bottom line. The private sector partnership together with other Asian private sector stakeholders first drafted the volunteer commitment for this ministerial conference at the dedicated session at the preparatory meeting in April. We have further debated it again for a full during the 6 a.m. CDRR, taking into account the globally emerging issues from private sector consolidation around the world that took place in the past month. We, the private sector, understand the role we play, the responsibility we have to work with all stakeholders such as government, non-governmental organization, and the civil society. Economies cannot exist without communities. Communities cannot exist without economies. And the private sector is, in most cases, the key driver for economy and the social development within the community. With that understanding, our voluntary commitment specified three actions to be achieved by 2015, 2016, and 2020. These are, the first, improved collaboration of the private sector in DRR through greater partnership. Our targets are quantitative in, qualitative improvement of the nature of partnership and the platform for collaboration. This includes increased trust in partnership and a more equal footing in platforms to encourage more inclusive policy making. Quantitative, quantitative increase in private sector engagement with public sector, non-governmental organization, and academia. This includes greater participation of private sector members on national and other multi-sectoral platforms with UNISDR and in development of public policies that encourage and incentivize DRR practices in the private sector and the partnerships where the private sector will collaborate with local government and the NGOs to build their competitiveness into proficiencies. Improve the risk information sharing between the private, public, and the non-government sectors in Asia. This includes making risk information comprehensible and communable in standard form for other stakeholders as well as SMEs. The second action, increase knowledge and capacity in resilient business practice among the private sectors with focus on improving the resilience of the global supply chain from grassroots level. Our target is to reduce business failure related to disasters. 
by raising awareness and building the capacity of co co cooperations, notably SMEs, in the use of business continuity management and planning, BCM, BCP. As a fundamental element in the long-term business resilience through the protection of asset, production of goods and services, supply chains, and the growth plans from possible hazards. By addressing the need for increased knowledge and capacity in basic business plan, we are needed before BC, BCM, BCP, perhaps by mentoring and the coaching between larger and the smaller enterprises with the support of business, federation, and associations. By making sure that communication are clear and the tools kits are practical and actionable. The third action, promote standards and reporting for resilience. Develop standards and the certification to stimulate stimulate self-adoption and the increased visibility of good practices of risk prevention, risk reduction, and resilience. Increased transparency on disaster risk awareness and the business continuity management in annual sustainability, corporate social responsibility, and any other business reports to stimulate self-adoption and the increased visibility of good practices of risk prevention, risk reduction, and resilience. We will reach out to our governments and be proactive in opening dialogue. We hope to achieve mutual trust and inclusive input into policy making. Disasters directly affect business performance and undermine long-term competitiveness and the sustainability, with serious consequence for business, households, and the nation's prosperity. We need to reduce business failure as a result of disasters in order to ensure growth to community, economy, and, com economy and the nation. Private sector can provide solutions for DRR through its, all, its core strength and its core business. Therefore, we ask everyone, including governments, to consider how to fully and meanfully engage the private se sector. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sandra Wu, for uh, this um, important commitment. And now I'd like to invite um, uh, Mr. Mohammed Atif Sheikh, who represents individuals and organizations concerned with disability. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. And good, uh, good morning to everyone. The stakeholder group of individuals and organizations concerned with disability inclusion in DRR is mainly represented by Disability Inclusive DRR Network, Rehabilitation International, and the Nippon Foundation. Uh, the individuals and organizations uh, concerned with the disability stakeholder group emphasizes that the inclusion of disability in DRR is critical for the creation of resilient, inclusive, and equitable societies and disability inclusive DRR increases the resilience and chances of survival of all persons in the community and minimizes collective damage and loss. I will go through the main commitments which our stakeholder group has made and not go, going into, without going into the details of targets and uh, indicators. We are committed that we will contribute to fostering interministerial, interdepartmental, and multi-sectoral engagement to ensure that disability inclusive DRR is mandated and implemented. We are also committed to empower persons with disabilities and their representative organizations to actively participate in and report on the development and monitoring of disaster risk reduction plans, programs, and actions. We are also committed to extend 
the principle of universal design in combination with assistive technology development and reasonable accommodation to ensure that the delivery of risk reduction related infrastructure establishment and service delivery for equal participation of persons with disabilities at all levels of disaster risk reduction. We are committed to strengthen community-based inclusive DRR initiatives to empower all persons with disabilities, including women, children, older persons, to re realize their full participation in and contribution to all phases of disaster risk reduction within their communities. The concept of disability inclusive DRR network was initiated in fifth in the Asian Ministerial Conference on DRR. And today, here in Bangkok, we have witnessed a shift from the concept that disabled, the people with disabilities are not merely part of the vulnerable group, but they are also the positive contributors in DRR. And we have tried, to, tried our best to contribute at the Asia-Pacific level as a, as a group. And we are looking forward to contribute as well at the global platform. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mohammed um, Atif Sheikh. And uh, we know that for sure now you are a very important part of this multi-stakeholder network. You have proven that very strongly in the last few years. So I know you will be in Sendai as well. <laughs> Thank you. And um, then the final speaker on this side of the table is a representative of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies in Asia this time. It's uh, Mr. Mohammed Atef Siddiqui, who is from Pakistan. Excellency, and Madam Chair, distinguished guests and participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. On behalf of the IFRC, it's an absolute honor and privilege to present a summary of its statement of voluntary commitments to this August forum. The detailed statement has been posted on the websites of the IFRC, the UNISDR, and the AMCDRR. Ladies and gentlemen, at the conclusion of the sixth AMCDRR, the IFRC, its national societies together with the Secretariat, wish to commit to taking the following actions. Number one, enhancing resilience at the local level. Within this commitment, the IFRC will continue to invest in strengthening community resilience to natural and man-made disasters at the local level and ensure our programs bridge the gap between development and humanitarian work through sustainable, accountable, and participatory approaches that integrate disaster risk reduction public health, safe shelter, livelihoods, and climate change adaptation strategies. The IFRC will A, support communities in high-risk areas to be organized and have the capacity to identify problems, establish priorities, and act, in particular through the establishment of local early warning systems in partnership with governments and other stakeholders. B, promote communities as the main stakeholders of resilience and the need to build on their capabilities, knowledge, and plans. C, promote and facilitate the participation of women, youth, children, and people living with disability as leaders in local level, resilience building activities and platforms through volunteer and community-based networks. D, advocate for greater official recognition, response and resource allocation to low profile silent disasters, which affect the greatest numbers of people. E, Facilitate partnerships between community groups and local government in order to monitor the implementation of DRR laws and frameworks and accountability mechanisms. Number two, 
commitment is improving public investments in disaster and climate risk management to protect and sustain development gains. The IFRC commits to the following actions to reduce climate change related economic and social change. A, deepen our engagement with civil society organizations with a view of developing more effective linkages between DRR and climate change in our plans and activities. B, strengthen our humanitarian diplomacy on DRR and climate change with sub-regional bodies such as ASEAN and SARC, especially to advocate on the development and implementation of effective disaster laws and regulations. C, encourage stakeholders to increase their commitment to long-term sustainable disaster risk reduction and climate adaptation programming. D, use scientific and climate risk information for anticipatory and adaptive actions at all levels and across time scales. E, prioritize the support of national society engagement in national DRR and climate change adaptation platforms. <clears throat> the next uh, commitment, a private sector role in public and private partnership for disaster risk reduction. The IFRC recognizes that disaster risk reduction is everybody's business, including the private sector. The IFRC commits to increasing and deepening our partnerships with the private sector to reduce, to reduce disaster risk by A, encouraging and assisting our corporate partners to make longer-term resilience building investments, especially at the local level. B, linking corporate social responsibility initiatives with national society volunteering opportunities. C, prioritize building the capacity of national societies to mobilize resources within their domestic markets and for activities that directly benefit local communities. In the end, on behalf of the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies and the representatives of national societies, I would like to express our gratitude and appreciation to the host and the organizers of this very uh, wonderful event that has been conducted efficiently. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think it says in the document that you're speaking on behalf of 37 national societies. That's a very significant infrastructure to count on for the implementation. Thank you very much for that commitment. And um, I'll now move over, over to uh, Ms. Visheka Hidelage. She is the representative of the Stakeholder Group on Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment in Disaster Risk Management and Regional Resilience Building. You have the floor, madam. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, uh, friends. Uh, stakeholder group on gender and women's issues in DRR uh, met a few, few more times since the pre-conference meeting. Um, and discussed further uh, our actions, looked at the voluntary statements. Um, we reviewed uh, the inputs uh, into HFA2 process that, was, that happened over the last couple of days. And uh, we, we like to make some comments. I'm not going to read out the voluntary statement per se, but I would like to emphasize on few points that, and observations that we've made. Uh, uh, so that uh, you will have a, get a, uh, a very brief understanding of where we are coming from. The stakeholder group consists of a number of members from organizations, governments, uh, civil society organizations, networks across uh, uh, Asia Pacific. And the group uh, which has started loosely from the last AMC DRR is coming together and it's, it's forming into a very strong group. Um, 
we also like to uh, note the progress made since the last MCDRR on uh, looking at women solely as a, a vulnerable group uh, to uh, acknowledge them as a stakeholder, half of the humanity, uh, people with capacities and able to contribute and take leadership in DRR uh, uh, while noting that their specific vulnerabilities need to be addressed in a specific manner. We, however, quite disappointed that uh, the, the low-level participation uh, of women at the high-level discussions in the MCDRR, and we urge uh, all stakeholders to take note of this and work towards making a significant improvement to this status in the Sendai discussions, and, and we request uh, to, to, to work towards a minimum target of 30% women's participation in the, uh, the next, next discussion. Uh, towards this end, uh, the stakeholder group is also committed uh, to make our own contribution in terms of carrying out uh, training programs to sensitize and build capacity of the officials uh, so that the, the next round of negotiations will happen in a more gender sensitive manner. Um, the stakeholder group also uh, reaffirmed the commitments from the last IAP meeting, um, which is uh, uh, to pilot action research and pilot, the use of sex and age disaggregated data in uh, countries, few countries in South Asia, with the leadership of SARC Disaster Management Center. And uh, we are hoping that this will uh, create environment and, and a space to test out some of the methodologies and training programs and tools that are available and done by a number of stakeholders. Uh, we will be able to test some of them. And also uh, through this, and we will share knowledge through the IAP platform, and through this we will be able, together with the SARC Disaster Management Center, we will be able to inspire other sub-regions, such as the Southeast Asia and Pacific regions, to carry out the same. Uh, the members of uh, the, the stakeholder group also plan a series of uh, actions towards Sendai, uh, which includes uh, linking up with the other regions, Africa and Latin America, and to work to share knowledge and work towards a common agenda uh, to, and, and to share resources uh, to make this uh, challenging task more easier. We also decided to work with the key people and the focal points who are working on the SDGs and uh, climate change uh, discussion so that we can also work in a, uh, towards a common agenda, talk in the same language and make a significant uh, uh, change in the discussion. Um, we are also uh, quite happy to note that the Japanese uh, Women's Network joined uh, the SAC, uh, the stakeholder uh, group, and we would like to ac acknowledge the work that they are already uh, carrying out towards the Sendai and endorse the, the Sendai call for action on gender and diversity on DRR and hope that the Japanese government will support their call uh, and, and we will be able to do uh, joint work towards uh, Sendai uh, World Conference. Uh, we, will, we also want to note that uh, in the HFA discussions, the fact, the, 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 the emphasis in the document is on strengthening women's role, and we would like it to be much stronger recognition and institutionalizing women's role. So with that, I think these are few things. The, 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 Voluntary commitment itself is a document that is available to you on the web, uh, and I hope you got a gist of what we were discussing. Thank you very much.
Thank you, uh, Vishaka Hidalaga, for very concrete commitments to uh, get us to Sendai with uh, much better representation of women in the high-level segments. Especially important. And now I'd like to invite um, the representative of mayors and local governments, Syed Mohammed Ashkar Shah Gilani. Now the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Good morning, the ministers, mayors, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Syed Mohammed Ashkar Shah Gilani, ex Tehsil Nazim District Lodhra, President Local Council Association of the Punjab, Pakistan, and also President of United Cities and Local Government, Asia Pacific. I'm honored to represent the stakeholders group, mayors and local governments in this conference. I am tasked to deliver this statement of commitment on behalf of the group. We local governments commit to create awareness and political will among local governments leaders for smart investment on DRR, improve cooperation and work with local governments, associations, private sector and community including women and youth for risk assessment, community fund, safe business, local planning action for DRR and implementation, transparency, and accountability financing mechanism. Through local government association, lobbying to national government, as well as be ready to directly get involved in conducting risk assessment and developing technical guidelines for local governments and proving access of for local governments on finance for DRR consolidating national and lo local laws and structure to respond to DRR, build capacity of local governments to mainstream risk assessment in planning and implementation, promote, join and extend the campaign of my city and town are getting ready beyond 2015 with you are not alone slogan and translate the handbook for mayors into local languages for better usage and compile and disseminate new best practices. As of the evolving HF52 priorities which will be our long-term action, we will strengthen the role and functions of local governments in DRR through advocacy at national and Asia-Pacific level. Promote peer-to-peer -peer learning or decentralized cooperation among cities and local governments to enhance local resilience. Provide reward for the cities and local governments in the Asia-Pacific region that are working towards resilience through a towards resilience of cities and local governments awards lobby to national government to mainstream drr in primary and secondary education curriculum lobby to national government for drr policies to be implemented with more decentralized responsibilities and clear regulations work with national governments local governments association private sector and community to design evacuation shelters and site identification including its technical guidelines such as open space, streets, parks, multipurpose halls and sports complex. Actions related to our commitment have varied of targets depending on the scope of the implementation. However, the short and mid-term of action will be mainly conducted at the local and national level. On the other hand, the long-term activities are 
more to the regional level of Asia Pacific. This is to ensure that the activities are well connected and integrated from the lowest level until the highest level of community. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much for that um, uh, important contribution by uh, local governments in uh, Asia, of which there may be many thousands. I also noted that you promised to establish a new award for local governments that work towards resilience, and uh, I hope we can spread this information uh, significantly. Um, and Next speaker is uh, representing the media. Uh, this is uh, Ms. Natalia Ilieva, and she will deliver the commitments by the media. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Your Excellency, uh, distinguished guests and colleagues in disaster risk reduction, I represent the Asia Media Stakeholder Group, but before I read the statement that we united behind, I would like to say a few words about uh, who we are in this group. Um, we have broadcast media, radio and television networks. We have also print media. Broadcast media is represented by my organization, Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union. Uh, we have 265 members across the region with potential reach of over 3 billion people. And the print media, we have uh, distinguished leading uh, national papers from over 10 countries. We are united behind the following statement, a voluntary commitment. Given its unparalleled reach to white audiences, the media could play a crucial role in promoting disaster risk reduction policies, early warnings for disasters, and advancing regional and national disaster risk reduction agendas. In order to fulfill media's immense potential as an information disseminator and powerful behavior changer, media should be accepted not as a mere messenger, but a partner in developing and implementing DRR policies at regional, national, and local levels. As the common denominator for all stakeholders in the disaster risk reduction processes, Media could bridge the gaps in communications and dismantle the silos in which most stakeholders work at the moment. Many media organizations in the Asia Pacific region already accept their duty and responsibility to serve white audiences, including most vulnerable groups such as women, children, youth, persons with disabilities and elderly, before, during and after disasters. More importantly, Media organizations in the region recognize the need to be proactively preparing people during the quieter times between disasters. This was demonstrated when more than 300 delegates representing broadcast media, NGOs, academia and disaster management offices across the region issued a statement of commitment during the ABU Media Summit on Climate Change and Disaster Risk Reduction held in Jakarta in June 2014. They committed to support media to expand coverage of climate change and disaster risk reduction and educate their audiences on these issues. They also recognized the huge gap in media knowledge and expertise to do so and that the messengers have to be educated themselves about the complex issues of climate change impacts and mitigations and disaster risk reduction. In accepting to play such a crucial role in informing, educating the public and galvanizing action for advancing the DRR agenda throughout the region, the Asian Media Stakeholder Group confirms its support for the Hugo Framework for Action process and commits to. First, work with all stakeholders involved in disaster risk reduction to facilitate broad partnership in risk prevention and building resilient communities. Second, ensure that the radio and TV organizations' infrastructure and networks are better integrated in the early warning disaster communication systems and plans at national and community levels. Third, engage media in the development, 
in implementation of national disaster risk reduction policies and programs. So the media, especially broadcast media, are more comprehensively prepared to inform about risk prevention and disaster risk reduction. Four, enhance journalists' capacity to produce quality programs on climate change, disaster risk reduction, and sustainable development concepts as part of the same solution for long-term economic growth and social cohesion. And finally, create space for coverage of and discussion on climate change and disaster risk reduction issues in the form of special regular programs, editorial columns, and mainstreaming disaster risk reduction in news, current affairs, children programs, and other radio and TV formats. This is a long-term commitment because that will uh, require a lot of work on our behalf with our members to change their management policies and practices. As a short-term uh, uh, commitment, my organization, Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union, is working with the organizers already to bring more journalists to Sendai conference so more people know about what their governments and other stakeholder groups are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you for um, uh, your commitment to media's engagement on prevention and disaster risk reduction as information and as educators. Important. Thank you. And now, next speaker. Um, we are moving towards the end of the table. The next speaker is Ms. Sassinacci in Dapol. She represents the group of children, youth and child-centered organizations. Please. Thank you, Chair. Excellencies, honored ministers and esteemed guests, good morning. My name is Sassinacci in Dapol and on behalf of the child-centered organizations along with children and youth in Asia Pacific, I will read excerpts from our statement. We, children, adolescents, and youth, and child-centered organizations from countries in Asia and the Pacific, attending the sixth Asian Ministerial Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, recognizing that Asia Pacific consists of 750 million young people aged 15 to 22, which is 60% of the world's youth population. In addition, persons under 14 years constitute 25.3% of the population in Asia Pacific. Children in the region under the age of 18 make up more than 50% of those affected and are disproportionately affected by disasters. In the view of the six AMC DRR, forums and consultations at national, regional, global or community levels with children and youth across 10 countries in Asia, Bangladesh, Cambodia, India, Indonesia, Japan, Mongolia, Nepal, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam were conducted between April to June 2014. Participating children and youth identified key recommendations for adoption by governments civil society, academe, and the private sector, and inclusion in the HFA2 in order to achieve resilience for nations and communities. Based on the results of the forums and consultations, and building on the progress in the implementation of the Child's Charter on DRR, we call upon participants of the sixth Asian Minostro Conference on disaster risk reduction to one, support and strengthen meaningful participation of children and youth in DRR and enable access to information. Establish a global and regional children, adolescents, and youth network on DRR as an avenue to share experiences, broaden perspectives, and collectively engage governments and global and regional actors on DRR. Establish at the nation national level, a children, adolescents, and youth council which will provide guidance and work with schools and education officials in strengthening DRR. Institutionalize participation of children, 
adolescents, and youth in community and school-based DRR activities. Two, ensure equity and increased access of children and youth and risk-prone households to quality basic social services. Provide health care centers with adequate facilities and resources that can reach the remote and vulnerable areas of communities. Make children's health a priority. Provide mental health care for children and youth affected by disasters. Ensure that disaster management authorities work on disaster risk reduction with ministries and departments in charge of child-facing social <laughs> services. Three, build safe community infrastructures and ensure relief and reconstruction to help reduce future risks. Improve and ensure access to safe evacuation centers and facilities that are, for instance, sensitive to gender and disability. Promote and build safe evacuation centers aside from schools. Relief and recovery must reach the most vulnerable, especially those from the most remote areas, regardless of their gender, disability, and ethnicity. Four, make schools safe and improve infrastructure to ensure learning continuity. Construct safe learning facilities. Integrate risk reduction and resilience education in the curriculum. Implement and strengthen school disaster risk management. Five, children and youth protection must be a priority at all times and for all children regardless of backgrounds. Advocate for the rights and responsibilities of children, adolescents, and youth in the context of disaster. Develop and enforce policies and regulations on child protection before, during, and after disasters. Protection for the most vulnerable. Recognize the special needs of young people, especially in developing countries, in least developing countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing countries. Six, promote environmental pro protection and management to reduce future disaster and climate change risk. Seven, promote good governance on DRR. Intensify fund sourcing and increase budget for DRR, as well as DRR integration into development and the construction of safe evacuation centers. Encourage the development of basic guidelines and risk indicators to better inform child and youth specific policy and monitor progress. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Sassina Chindapol, speaking on behalf of 40% of the population in Asia. And finally, uh, a group without which we cannot make the progress we need. Uh, on behalf of the parliamentarians for disaster risk reduction, we have the honor to have with us Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Your Excellencies, uh, fellow participants, distinguished guests, may I now read the statement from the parliamentarians from Bangladesh, Lao, PDR, Philippines, Republic of Korea, with contributions of parliamentarians from other Asian countries. Noting the achievements of the Hugo Framework for Action in saving lives and reducing disaster impacts in Asia Pacific, with pride that parliamentarians have contributed to these achievements, including by delivering the commitments made at the fifth AMC DRR, for example, advocacy for disaster risk reduction at national and regional levels, adopting new disaster risk management laws in Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar, and Vietnam, and strengthening the parliamentary oversight of disaster risk management and climate change adaptation implementation. Concurring to the previous resolutions of parliamentarians on disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation, sharing the importance, the important learning that development failure, such as poorly managed urbanization, constructs new risk and agreeing 
with the proposed elements of the post-2015 framework for DRR that a new risk management approach is needed, which goes beyond reduction of existing risk to transform development to prevent new risk and strengthen resilience. Supporting a post-2015 agenda that makes disaster and management risk management imperative to achieving sustainable development, which can only be achieved if coherent national targets and indicators to implement the, inter the interlinked post-2015 framework for disaster risk reduction, the sustainable development goals, and climate change arrangements will be set and their implementation is supported by, as by accountable monitoring and periodic reviews. We commit to the following del deliverables in support of the post-2015 framework for DRR in our roles as legislators, people's representatives, and political leaders to complement the government's efforts and help them achieve and deliver first. Promote, articulate, and adopt policy framework that adds coherence and mutual reinforcement of disaster risk reduction, response to climate change, and sustainable development. Number two, a strengthen legislative framework to enable risk-sensitive development and building resilience. Third, ensure that governments in Asia set certain percentage of national budget allocation and local governments set higher percentage of locally generated income for disaster and climate change management. Fourth, initiate institutional reforms towards disaster resilient development, including working with governments to create regulatory and incentive mechanisms for private sector to invest in disaster risk management. Fifth, strengthen legislative and policy oversight. Parliaments in Asia will have functional standing committees on DRR and climate change and develop mechanisms to monitor the implementation of disaster risk management legislation and policies. We commit in the next two to four years, first, obtain the highest level political buy-in in Asian countries for the post-2015 framework for DRR. Political leaders from Asian countries commit for national and regional implementation of the post-2015 framework for DRR. Second, review the existing legislations, identify gaps, and develop a set standard indicators of a legislation that supports risk-sensitive development to be applied at national and regional levels. And finally, engage more national parliaments and Asia-Pacific regional parliamentary networks, such as the regional Interparliamentary Union, the Globe International, Asia-Pacific Parliamentary Forum, the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, the International Conference on Asian Political Parties, and the ASEAN Interparliamentary Association to share information and knowledge and to implement the parliamentary resolutions on disaster risk reduction and climate change and the above mentioned commitments for HFA2. Thank you very much. A pleasant good morning to all. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman uh, Rodriguez. And that uh, concludes uh, the report back to you from the stakeholder groups. As you realize, uh, there is a very strong foundation of partner partnerships offered to the implementation of the work on disaster risk reduction from parliaments, local governments, the wide network of Red Cross, Red Crescent societies, and very significant groups of uh, private sector, science and academia, and, and social groups. 
Uh, with that, um, I'd like to thank all of you for being here at the table. I think you are free and invited to step down and continue to listen from the audience. We thank you for being here with us. And I'd like to pass back now the floor to Ambassador uh, Tani, who will uh, proceed with um, presenting to you the Bangkok Declaration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Margareta, and thank you for all the stakeholder groups for their presentations. I now have the honor of presenting to you the Bangkok Declaration on Disaster Risk Reduction in Asia and the Pacific 2014. This document has been circulated uh, in this room, so you should have a copy with you. It has also been or is being uploaded into the website of the conference along with the HFA2 input paper I mentioned earlier. With regards to the process itself, the, the main elements of the declaration were initially discussed at the ISDR Asia Partnership in April. Following the circulation of the, the pre-zero draft through the IAP, which was also posted on the 6 AMC DRR website, the zero draft was prepared incorporating inputs and comments received from several countries. And of course, the, the final draft was, the first draft was presented and sent to country delegations this past Sunday. I wish to take this opportunity before we get to the substantive parts to really thank all those who participated in the drafting committee, uh, those from country delegations as well as those from stakeholder groups. And in particular, I wish to express my, my admiration really for the representative of the children and youth group whose tenacious, passionate and dedicated advocacy of his positions is really appreciated and admired. I also wish to thank all the other participants who bore with us, bear with us as we spent around more than 12 hours, I think, over the past couple of days to draft and come to a final draft of the outcome documents. As for the, as for the draft itself, the Bangkok Declaration, the key messages include recognizing the achievements of the HFA while acknowledging gaps and challenges which remain and for which more work needs to be done. It noted the need for disaster risk reduction and the building of resilience to disasters to be addressed with a renewed sense of urgency in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication. It realized the need to focus on root causes of risks and the anthropogenic nature of risks including climate change and variability. It recognizes the importance of people-centered development models, which reduces the impact of uncertainties and increases self-immunity of local communities as guided by, among other things, the sufficiency economy philosophy of His Majesty the King of Thailand, as recognized by the UNDP's Human Development Lifetime Achievement Award. It appreciates the participation and partnership of stakeholder groups. It acknowledges the learning from the HFA that sustainable development and poverty eradication requires disaster and climate risk management as an integral part of developmental planning and programs. It acknowledges the important role of science and technologies. And it appreciates the past two-year multi-stakeholder consultations by governments and partner organizations in Asia and the Pacific, which led to the Asia-Pacific input document for the post-2015 framework for disaster risk reduction, and recommends it as one of the regional contributions for deliberation at the Third World Conference for Disaster Risk Reduction in Sendai next year. In this regard, the declaration calls on governments and stakeholders to enhance resilience at the local levels, to improve public investments for disaster and climate risk management to protect and sustain development gains, 
to increase dialogue among all stakeholders to identify barriers and opportunities to build on an enabling environment for public, private, and other partnerships to promote the use and further development of science, technology, and innovation, to enhance governance, transparency, and accountability, to contribute to the global deliberations on the post-2015 framework for disaster risk reduction, developed an Asia-Pacific Regional HFA2 implementation plan, and contribute to an enhanced monitoring and review mechanism. To build coherence between the post-2015 framework for disaster risk reduction and the concurrent processes on the sustainable development goals and climate change arrangements. The declaration also resolved to invite the Royal Thai government as hosts of this meeting, as well as other governments from the Asia-Pacific region in collaboration with UNISDR and members of the IAP to carry the message of the Bangkok Declaration on Disaster Risk Reduction to the global process leading up towards the Third World Conference in Sendai in March next year. It also encourages inclusion of the actions adopted in the Declaration into national policies, strategies, and action plans, deliver the commitments, and share the progress in the next AMC-DRR meeting. And it calls on national governments and other stakeholders to support the implementation of the post-2015 framework for disaster risk reduction, in particular, the Asia-Pacific Regional HFA2 implementation plan and the priority actions stated in this declaration, and establishes a technical working group within the IAP to undertake a study to promote linkages and synergies of national, sub-regional, and regional disaster risk reduction strategies and plans in Asia and the Pacific. And it calls on the UNISDR to enhance its regional capacity and, in consultation with the ISDR system partners, provide an improved monitoring system to be made available to all governments and intergovernmental organizations and to periodically review the implementation of HFA2. The draft also welcomes the stakeholders' voluntary commitment statements, as we, as we have, have just heard, and the Yogyakarta Declaration Progress Reports, and call on all stakeholders to participate in the development of the Asia-Pacific Regional HFA2 Implementation Plan and periodically re report on the delivery of their voluntary commitment statements in regional platform meetings. I believe this is a strong message from the Asia-Pacific region. I believe it is substantive and will make a meaningful contribution to the post-2015 DRR process. I therefore present this final document for adoption by this August gathering. Thank you very much. May I now pass the floor to the special representative of the UN Secretary General, Ms. Margareta Wallström, to moderate the plenary discussion on the way forward to implement the Bangkok Declaration. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Tani. Uh, the conference is grateful to you for having, uh, through 12 hours of work, um, helped to shape the final declaration of this uh, conference. Um, uh, colleagues, uh, Excellencies, um, we do have a few minutes, and what I would like to focus you on is really what do we do now? How do we get to Sendai? I think you've heard important opportunities for, um, I'm sorry to bring a new terminology here, interstakeholder cooperation. Um, what are the opportunities that have um, uh, been very clearly put on the table in front of us here by the stakeholder groups, by this uh, declaration endorsed by the uh, ministers, the heads of delegations of Asia and Pacific? And I love, since we mentioned the word Pacific, I also like to highlight the Pacific Platforms outcome document that you, you participated there yourself. So between now and Sendai, we have uh, 
eight months. And um, I'd like to seek some thoughts from you on what can and must be achieved during these eight months. Uh, many of you have made what you call short-term commitments here at the high table, very practical issues. Um, let's see, we we'll give the opportunity before we move towards the close of this plenary session and the closing ceremony, if there may be other suggestions that we should bring to the table. I see Mr. Saki from Bangladesh. Is there a mic somewhere? The mic is coming. Thank you. Dear Madam Margarita, certainly you are a good spirit. You have the courage, you have the determination, and you have the non-stop effort to save the earth with all the species it is holding with love and joy. World disaster community will have to wait centuries to have another Margarita spirit. And of course, you are like goddess to some local community. And uh, we wish you will be goddess of all the local community in the globe. I am Jakir from a small community in Bangladesh. I thank uh, Thai government to organize the huge uh, program successfully, of course. I thank to the workers, to the ladies, to the gentlemen who I never did see without a smile. And uh, they were very, very much eager to support us to the conference. I also thanks to the participants who have been gathered here. Certainly, we are some good human and uh, we have the responsibilities. The earth, the nature has given us the opportunity to be here, to have the responsibility to perform our responsibility to save the earth from early destruction. Dear participants, we the human are so intelligent, we can see 60, 56 billion light years far. And within this length, there is no such element like Earth-like. But at the same time, we are so full that we are trying to destroy it as soon as possible. Dear participants, I would like to thank you and let us promise ourselves to be a good human while we are pretending to do as a disaster practitioner and support the Mother Earth to live longer with all the species she is holding up with great affection, love, and joy. Happiness is in life will then looking for us. Thank you. Thank you so much for that message from a community in Bangladesh, for your support, for your assumption of responsibility for reminding us of our power to see 56 billion light years away, which increases our responsibility. I think that uh, was a powerful, almost conclusion to our meeting, but we have one more speaker who wishes to add a few words. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Chair. My name is uh, Jonathan Schott from Sustainable Development Foundation in Thailand. Um, I'd just like to emphasize that Although I may be a, a white, uh, middle-aged foreigner, but I'm actually a representative of grassroots organizations here in Thailand. Um, I, I'd hoped there might be more opportunity to reflect on the Bangkok statement. In the end, it seemed to be uh, passed through to ratification very quickly with, without any real uh, opportunity for discussion. M maybe it's too late to request an amendment, but um, I would like to reflect on the, the governance issue. Um, 
from my point of view, the statement on governance is, is very weak. I agree with what's been said about improving financial accountability, but I think we should go a lot further than that. And I would like to suggest the following statement. I would like for all uh, governments and stakeholders present here today to commit to established principles of good governance and respect and defend fundamental human rights and civil liberties, not only in DRR, but also in broader development activities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think that may actually lead us to the end. There is a concrete proposal, uh, Chairman. I will, uh, seeing no other wish for comments, I will pass the word back to you, Mr. Chairman, to conclude the conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in, in closing this plenary summary, and before we move into the closing ceremony, on behalf of the drafting committee, I'd like to thank all government delegations, as well as those from the UN system, intergovernmental organizations, and all stakeholder groups for their active and valuable contribution to the drafting of the outcome documents. In particular, I wish to thank you, Margareta Wallström, the Special Representative of the United Nations Secretary General, and your ABLE team here in, in Bangkok, the UNISDR, Asia Pacific Regional Office, as well as those from Geneva. In particular, the regional office here headed by, of course, uh, Ms. Feng Min Khan and her officials. I also wish to thank the officials from the Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation for their support, not least for smuggling in uh, some food to the drafting committee while we met into the night thus ensuring our right to food, as commented by many. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will get the chance to thank all of you at, in another hour and a half, but I will, would like to say just a personal thanks to Ambassador Tani, who uh, is our partner in Geneva and here and also to echo uh, what um, our colleague from Bangladesh just said, the eternal smiles and presence of all the colleagues of the Department of, of uh, Preparedness and Man Disaster Management and all the colleagues from the Thai authorities and volunteers who have been here have made this conference so easy for us and quite frankly overfed us a bit, but that's okay. So thank you so much from this session. We will now proceed to the uh, closing ceremony and somewhere we should have an MC that will take over the table. Where is the MC? <laughs> yes, maybe we just wait for a few minutes and then we'll pass on to um, the next element here of the ceremony. Thank you. Just please don't go away. <laughs>
สวัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะ Excellencies, Honorables, Distinguished Delegates, Friends from Media Corps, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning. Once again, we meet. I am Wasu Sang Sing Kao, your MC for the closing ceremony this morning. Good morning. I am Natha g o m o n w a t i n co MC. It is our great pleasure and honor to welcome all of you at the official closing ceremony of the sixth AMC DRR. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the final event of the sixth AMC DRR, and we are much honored and privileged to have here with us this morning, b o m l u n g p r a d a d i s u k u n the Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Interior, and also Mrs. Margareta Wallstrom, the Special Representative of the UN General Secretary for Disaster Risk Reduction. To give us a few closing remarks later on. In the past two days, there has been a film festival side event and also a short film contest organized by Thai PBS. Therefore, let us start the closing event with the awards ceremony and give the floor to Thai PBS. Please welcome Mr. Anothai Udomsin, Director of Academic Institute of Public Media of the Thai PBS. Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, on the occasion of the Sixth Asian Ministerial Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, Thai Public Broadcasting Service, in collaboration with United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, the Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation, Ministry of Interior of Thailand. Has organized the short video clip competition under the theme "Promoting Investment for Resilient Nations and Communities." The competition is open in four categories, which are the best video clip produced by national, international, and non-governmental organizations working on disaster risk reduction. General public, youth journalists and students, and media professionals. Two best entries of each category are selected. All of them have also been posted on the conference website for a popular vote. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to announce the winner of each category. For the best video clip produced by national, international, and non-governmental organizations working on disaster risk reduction, the nominations are. Disaster risk reduction in Bangladesh by Mercida Akter from Bangladesh. দুর্যোগের ট্রেনিং পাওয়ার পর আমরা এখন বন্যা আসার আগে আর আগে কি করতে হবে দুর্যোগে চলাকালীন কি করতে হবে বাচ্চা কাচ্চা ক্ষতি চুপ চাপ করে কি করতে হবে এই জিনিসগুলো আমাদের কথাই খাও সব মানে না 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 mình có thể làm gì để giảm thiểu những thiệt hại? Tham gia dọn dẹp vệ sinh ở nhà, ở trường học nhằm phòng chống dịch bệnh sau bão. Ngoài ra, hãy thường xuyên trồng cây xanh quanh nhà và trường học để tạo hàng rào chắn gió bão các bạn ạ. And the winner is. Disaster risk reduction in Bangladesh by Mercida Akter from Bangladesh. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Dear respected guest, on behalf of Oxfam, I'm Mushid Akhtar, uh, welcoming you all and uh, thank you all for selecting us for this uh, award uh, and also uh, you know that this is very exciting for us. We didn't know before uh, that we are going to be the, uh, awarded and uh, I would like to thank to the organizers of the 6th AMC DRR, the um, respected guest and also to the participants who voted for us for this uh, uh, award. And uh, this is a great recognition for not only for Oxfam, also for Bangladesh. And uh, really we will be proud for this. And also I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank Bangladesh government for being with us, for their guidance and uh, um, uh, being with us. Thank you all. And I am very excited and thank you once again. And you are all welcome to Bangladesh, beautiful country. Thank you very much. Your trophy is there. Masida? That is for you. The, the trophy. That is for you. So I would like to invite my colleague, uh, Mr. Abdul Kayum, who had a great contribution to develop this video clip. I would like to invite him to this stage to receive this award with me. Thank you. Congratulations. Once again, congratulations. Now, for the best video clip produced by general public, and the nominations are... Safe by Disapong Won Haram from Thailand. เดี๋ยวอย่าเพิ่งท้อแท้เราต้องร่วมด้วยช่วยกันป้องกันภัยพิบัติสวัสดีครับผมชื่อเด็กชายเจษฎาจำปาหอมช่างงอไม้พิเ
บทชีวิตลิขิตฟ้า or destination above by สุทัศน์สุรธา from Thailand ขอขอบคุณนะครับที่ให้ผมได้รับรางวัลนี้แล้วก็ขอขอบคุณไทยพีวีสนะครับที่ให้ผมได้มีโอกาสได้ทำคลิปอย่างนี้ Thank you for to the pies. I'm really grand to the pies. Thank you very much. Congratulations. What the best video clip produced by media professionals? The nominations are. Pag may gusto ng ekwento yung tao sa barbero, dun yung bagsak. After Yolanda. The Barber of Kiwan by Patricia Evangelista from the Philippines. Quite disaster program of Thai PBS by Nitya Kirati Sermsin from Thailand. แก้ปัญหาด้วยตนเองข้อดีของแฝดก็คือมันจะไม่ต้านน้ำมันจะลู่ไปกระทั่งพื้นที่ที่มันเคยพังก็หยุดพังนะครับก็คือแทนที่จะใช้ตังค์หลายๆล้านเนี่ยเราใช้ตังค์แค่สี่ห้าแสนบาทเนี่ยเราก็ดำเนินการได้อย่างที่ไม่เดือดร้อน And the winner is. After Yolanda, the Barber of Kiwan by Patricia Evangelista from the Philippines. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I come from a country where people die from disaster every year. 500 one year, 1,000 the next year, 6,000, 7,000 the year after. And there's statistics for many people. Those of us in Rappler hope that when we tell a story, you remember that every man in the story could be your father, could be your brother. We give them names and faces, and we hope that by telling the story again and again, people remember that they're one of us. But I would also like to use this opportunity to thank everyone from my country to yours, not just for this award, but for being one of us when our country was slaughtered by Yolanda Hayan. So, many thanks, maraming salamat. Congratulations again. Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, all the nominations were posted on the conference website for a popular vote. As shown from the website, the popular vote winner Goes to Chiang Mo, my beloved village, by Ampon Wapop and the team from Thailand. ภัยพิบัติทางธรรมชาติเป็นสิ่งที่ไม่สามารถห้ามได้นะครับแต่สิ่งที่ทําได้คือการเตรียมพร้อมรับมือและเรียนรู้ที่จะอยู่กับมันขอบคุณทุกกำลังใจช่างมอดเลิฟฟิลเลต thank you your excellencies distinguished delegates ladies and gentlemen that concludes the announcement of the winners and awards presentation of the video clip competition on disaster risk reduction 2014. Congratulations again to all the winners. As for me, I know Thay Udom Sin from Thai PBS. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Goodbye and Swati Krab.
Thank you very Thank you very much, Kun Ano Thai, for presenting the award, which will help promote public awareness on disaster risk reduction. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, at this point of time, we would like to invite Mom Luang Panatda Sakun, the Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Interior, to proceed to the stage and to deliver the speech for the closing ceremony for all of us. Mr. Permanent Secretary, please. Excellencies, special representatives of the Secretary General of the Disaster Risk Reduction, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of His Thai Majesty's Government as the host of the sixth AMCDRR, it has been a great honor indeed for all of us to receive dignitaries, 20 ministers, 18 level delegates, and 25 senior level delegations from Thailand's friendly countries at the 6th AMCDRR being held here in Bangkok. Moreover, more than 5,200 participants were working at the conference over the week long. I have such a great honor in receiving you to the conference and the beautiful, of course, our country, Thailand. I'm most delighted to witness the success of the conference as well as the launching of the Declaration of Bangkok today. As the host of the 6th AMC DRR, we would like to express our sincere gratitude towards the Honorable Margareta Wallström, Excellency Ministers, and all the participants who give us such a great honor for being here with us throughout the conference as well as the high-level dedications and all participants of the 6th AMC DRR, whom contributions made the success of the conference. I would also like to thank you all, our partners, especially the UNISDR, who have been giving us a tremendous support over the past two years to this final end. Thank you very much once again for your precious time participating in this conference. I do hope that you will have a chance to explore and experience our great pride of Thailand, the city of Bangkok. And please kindly come back to visit us again very soon. May I end with a Thai word in saying farewell to you. Thank you, Mom Luong Panadda Diskun, Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of the Interior, for the meaningful and thoughtful speech. Ladies and gentlemen, disasters often follow natural hazards. The scale of disaster varies. People are traumatized due to its uncertainty and continuity. In other words, we do not know how bad or how often that it happens. More than reviewing the progress of the Hugo Framework for the Action, HFA implementation, and determining necessary actions to accelerate the progress of HFA in its final years, 
Asian Ministerial Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction is a partnership working to ensure the region be mitigated from the suffering caused by disaster. Now, we can all witness the strengthened partnership of the participating entities with our own eyes in the past three days of the 6 AMC DRR. Now, the following summary video will speak louder than the words of ours. Please watch it together. For over a decade, we have been discussing together on how to reduce disaster risk throughout our Asian region and the world. One hundred and sixty-eight countries have adopted Kyogo Framework for Action. Today, after approximately seventy-two hours of brainstorming and reviewing our previous implementation of Kyogo Framework for Action, Asia Pacific is now coming in conclusion of how she will carry on to the next phase of disaster risk reduction. The result of this conference will be further discussed and main inputs in the third World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction or 3WCDRR. Some of us are from the other half of the world, thousands of miles away. Some of us are from the countries often affected by the disasters. No matter how tired we are, all of us are determined to coordinate in order to reduce the effects and risks of the disaster that could occur at all times. The result of the 6th AMC DRR will show the way. The theme of the conference is the promotion of the investment to prepare the community and country to handle the disaster, which was supported by countries and stakeholders at the Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction in Asia and the Pacific. Climate change is a main factor of recent natural disasters which have occurred more frequently. The recent disasters, especially water-related, had severe effects on countries' economy. Disaster is no longer an external factor of the economic growth, yet it is internal variable. We have to consider them as an essential determiner toward policies, framework, and developing process to manage the risks of the disasters and climate change. To alleviate the ability of self-adjustment and reconstruction will contribute to the sustainable development. To achieve the goal of being a country with self-adjustment and reconstruction and sustainable development, public policy and investment by the government are required to empower the country and community, including local economy, which are the core of the development, and to acquire the framework for the next 10 years. Bangkok Declaration on Disaster Risk Reduction in Asia and the Pacific, 2014. What about a good round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? We have just witnessed the video summary together 
And what we strongly believe is when we join hands and when our hearts become one, together we can overcome any obstacle along the way, whether rain or shine. And before we end our conference, we would like to invite Ms. Margareta Wallstrom, Special Representative of UN Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction, to proceed to the stage and deliver the closing remarks. Acting Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Interior, and the representative here of the Royal Thai Government, Excellencies, colleagues, and friends, we've reached the end and the conclusion of this um, important conference. And before I go into um, where we go from here, I'd like to thank again the Royal Thai Government for its uh, courage in taking on this ever-growing meeting in hosting us with such generosity and um, such abundance of welfare around us all the time and so many smiles always making sure that whatever we are looking for is there so please convey our gratitude to your colleagues, uh, to all the ministers that have been involved to support this conference, and also to the Thai people, in whose name, uh, of course, we are also conducting these discussions. Um, we um, started this conversation a few days ago by saying, um, are we moving on from 2005? Will our declaration reflect that we've learned, that we've accumulated massive experience, that we know there are some things that are now more critical than others in order to be moving forwards. I believe, yes, I, I think the declaration is a fair representation of some of the key priorities that need to guide the continued work on reducing disaster risk. It also is a commitment to be more inter-stakeholder, as I tried to say, inter-stakeholder with other processes on development, on climate change, on environmental issues, which is, as we all know, so important for moving forward. So I personally leave this conference, and I'd like to congratulate all of you that have put in time, you said 72 hours, in fact, of work discussions. I'm sure some of you feel that your particular perspective has not been totally reflected, but it's in there in the input to HFA. It is in there in all your commitments as uh, voluntary commitments presented today. A few highlights that have really emerged here is, uh, again, and you are familiar with this from a few years of work now, the focus on the local level. We cannot move forward if we cannot ensure enhancing resilience at local level through local institutions, but more knowledge, more uh, easily accessible information, technical capability and resources. The second point is um, the continued importance, but I would say that 10 years later after Yogo, we know a lot more about the nature um, of public investments and how public investments can be used in order to enhance resilience and uh, disaster risk reduction. And of course also a lot of knowledge exists now about what is required to manage climate risk. All this in order to support the development aspirations of countries, ensure continued social and economic development. Thirdly, and I think you'll all agree with that, the significance of the private sector engaging in its own interest to ensure resilience of its own business, but also as a partner in society recognizing, I think Ms. Sandra Wu said, communities need economies and economies require communities. There is no isolation between these various sectors. So to embrace this offer, and continue the work to develop standards for that engagement is uh, critically important. 
contribute to the post-2015 framework for disaster reduction uh, to develop an Asia-Pacific regional plan of action is an aspiration that I think many of you feel is coming out of this. Um, you probably need to take it via Sendai, but I do hope that the regional cooperation continues to be strengthened in this very vast and very diverse region with such enormous human and financial resources. And finally, the coherence, as we call it, um, this is a very positive process. It is built a lot on multi-stockholder engagement, it is built a lot on voluntary efforts, and it is built on a very rapidly increasing understanding and realization by all too many government of how exposed the economic assets and communities are to increasing disasters. So out of this process, we have been asked, all of us, to influence the def definition of the Sustainable Development Goals post-2015, that big vision for an universally and inclusive, sustainable and equitable development paradigm that is just now being discussed and negotiated by the very same communities, governments, of course, but many stakeholder groups also participate in that. So all of us, of course, have our opportunity to influence the spirit with which we work here into that discussion, but above all also to keep reminding them that unless disaster and climate risk is recognized as a risk that threatens these objectives, we cannot really progress at the pace that we believe is both necessary and justif justifiable for the sustainability and resilience of um, all countries and communities. So ladies and gentlemen, I think, um, I hope that um, your discussion about some of the perspectives that have been presented, the risk governance, um, the, the monitoring mechanism, the accountability mechanisms, all these instruments that we are very familiar with, how they help us to implement our work. You have heard the voluntary commitments by many of the stakeholders, very, very significant efforts. And these are on the website and we can together now pursue how we will follow up on all these issues. So I would say that the main summary, and I think Ambassador um, Tani reflected the same thing, is that there is a really strong consensus coming out of this group. You will have different priorities depending on the risk profile of your country, your community, but the determination and the sense of strong direction, not only to Sendai, but way beyond Sendai, is the most important thing that comes out of this conference. So I trust that um, all governments, of course the Thai government has been specifically requested to represent the declaration, as UNISDR and the UN system, but I really trust that every government here will feel the ownership of this declaration, as I expect the, all the stakeholder groups to take the declaration and make it theirs and use it very proactively and productively in the coming years. So where do we go from here? Uh, your declaration, together with the declarations from all other regions that have met already, from Africa, from Americas, from Asia, Pacific region, and now a few more meetings via Europe, where the European ministers will meet and endorse their declaration. Um, and a little bit later in the year, in September, the Arab states will meet. The Central Asia and South Caucasus region also met earlier in the year. So all your declarations are now being passed on to the first preparatory committee of the World Conference that takes place in Geneva in middle of July. So all the governments that come to the preparatory committee will be able to use your declaration and of course we particularly hope that this region will own the declaration and together with the national priorities and commitments represent very strongly this outcome. So the road to Sendai is not quite straight yet. It goes via Europe meeting, via the PREPCOM 1, 
and then, of course, through the Arab states and PREPCOM too. What will happen in the preparatory committee? We hope that as many governments as possible will come, 14th of July in Geneva. Stakeholder groups will be represented there. There will be opportunities for consultations between the Bureau of the committee and member states, of course, who are there, and the stakeholder groups. There will be technical discussions, but above all, there will be two days of conversation and presentations by governments on what they would like Sendai to achieve as an outcome document. There is, of course, not any draft HFA 2 yet, as you all know. The earliest you can expect something, which will be after the PREPCOM, uh, will be in the first couple of months after the PREPCOM, when the Bureau and the PREPCOM will take responsibility for um, putting together the outcome of the PREPCOM. And consultations will then take place during the months of September, October until we go to the second PREPCOM to look at a, a, a zero draft document. So there is a lot of work ahead. I would just like to encourage all of you, governments, all the stakeholder groups, do not lose attention and relax after this meeting. Your work has just started. This is just the beginning. Now, really think through how you're going to use this what will happen. In my points, talking points here, it says that the task is immense. I don't think so. I think the task is achievable. You have come a long way in for sure knowing what to do. I believe our main uh, opportunity now is be very practical about the mechanisms and the forms for how we achieve these goals. Think through how we use all the resources that are available. Governments can plan to use all these resources that have been presented through voluntary commitment. Governments have an open invitation by private sector to expand, and that means technical knowledge. It probably also means resources here and there. Asia is the region that many other people around the world look at. Regretfully, they look at you for your disasters all too often, but they also look to Asia for its economic growth, its uh, important social progress, very large population, fantastic people, fantastic scientific capability, te technology, everything here is available. But it's very clear that unless unless we really take heed from this message, that in order to protect that economic growth, in order to protect people's aspirations, the development paths that are chosen have to be considering risk and resilience in order to avoid that these risks take all too deep a cut in, that, uh, in those efforts. I know that probably almost all of you will come to Sendai, so it probably doesn't need any encouragement, but I would like to encourage all of you from your countries and your communities on the road to Sendai, um, use the opportunity of everything that has been presented here to um, think through also what new opportunity brings you what new partners you have found here, what new friends you have made, and um, what other meetings we can go to. <laughs> so I think that is the final message from me. On behalf, in fact, I would say of the UN Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, who, as you know, is a very strong supporter of what we are doing. Um, I take the opportunity to brief him several times a year to make sure he doesn't forget all this work that is going on. And um, he always seems to be very well aware about what's going on. It's a high priority on his agenda. The Secretary General has a prevention agenda. There are many things to prevent, but one of the most important thing is the continued losses from disasters. So I think I cannot promise you I'm not allowed to do that, but I think you will meet Mr. Ban Ki-moon in Sendai 
if you make sure that you are coming. Thank you very much for these four days. Thank you to all the partners that have helped it to happen. And thank you, of course, to my colleagues here in Asia, in the ISDR office, that have worked uh, so hard to deliver um, all these inputs. And to all the UN system partners um, that I believe, under the guidance also of the UN Plan of Action for Disaster Risk Reduction and Resilience, have an enormous opportunity to support countries in all the work that lies ahead of us. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your stay in wonderful Bangkok. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Margareta Wallstrom, for your concluding remarks. I'm sure it will certainly be food for thought for the next meeting in 2015. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the past three days, we do hope that you have the great and wonderful time here in Bangkok, Thailand. Please don't forget when our hearts are united as one, together we can overcome anything. And at this point of time, of course, before the final curtain, we definitely can't leave you without a special gift that we do prepare for all of you. And it is something that reflects the rich cultures of Thailand, the land of smile. And that is a very, very extraordinary performance. You may see the drums uh, on the stages, and now I think all the performers are ready. So please give the big round of applause for the drum performance and the contemporary dance from the Diamond Sparkle.
ิบเอ็ดเสร็จพันสามเทพนาคาสาธุการบรรดาฉลองเลือยระบำรำเต้นละเล่นกลองนาคันนองสองฟังโงโยงอักขีสนนงตนพลพิพานบาดาลมีพบสัญญามสยบเขารบนิยามตามปิธีบวงสวงเรศพิณนาคาเลิศนาคีแผ่นปัตถมีดิวดมสุขสมบูรณ์
สมัยพูดทาพระรัตนตรัยประจำใจไทยทุกคนชาวกรีกรมอิสลามกรีกาเสียทั้งสามกุศลรวมเสกสอนพรมงคลไทยสาธุชนคนดีงามาเถิดมาร่วมรักสามัคคีทั้งน้องพี่เหนือกลางอีสานใต้ถวายแด่พ่อหลวงของปวงไทยเทิดไทยราชันขวัญประชามาเถิดมาร่วมรักสามัคคีทั้งน้องพี่เหนือกลางอีสานใต้ถวายแด่พ่อหลวงของปวงไทยเธอไทยราชันวันประชา
of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that spectacular? Wow, nothing shorter than magnificent. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All the dedicated, lovely performers from the Sparkle Diamond team. Wow. Very upbeat performance. Definitely, definitely. And ah, so we have come to this moment, Dr. Yes. Natta. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Now, every journey has its end. Every path does stop somewhere. On behalf of the host country, on behalf of Thailand, we are more than grateful to all the panelists and participants whose dedicated efforts and goodwill have inspired and motivated us to build the resilient nations and communities. Last but not least, I hope you all have a great time, wonderful time in Thailand. For now, Khun Vasu Sang Sing Gao, I Natha Gomon Ratin. On behalf of Thailand, we'd like to say thank you and goodbye. Thank you so very much, and may we say again in Thai words, Khop Khun Krap, Lat Sawat Di Krap. Khop Khun Ka, Lat Sawat Di Ka. Hope can be na na ka. Goodbye, and see you again in Sendai, Japan, next year.